Hello, it's Keith here, and this is Lesson 16 of the platform-specific series of my 68,000 assembly programming tutorials. We've been looking at pallets on a wide variety of systems over the last couple of weeks. This time, it's time for the Genesis. Now, the Genesis is a pretty powerful system in this case of the 68,000 systems. It's got a lot of pallets. It's got four pallets of 16 colors each, but the limit it does have is it only has three bits per channel. And compared to some of the other systems, that is maybe a little bit more restrictive than we would prefer. But that said, it's a really nice, colorful system, so it's not going to be a major limitation for most games. And it was only when you really started to look side by side at the Super Nintendo and the Genesis that you started to notice that. So I think generally for us as amateur programmers, the Genesis is a really nice, easy system to use. And honestly, I'd pick the Genesis over the Super Nintendo as the easiest system for programming any day. So we're going to look at how to set those colors today. It's really quite simple. The colors on the Genesis are effectively very similar to the VDP memory. They're not true memory locations as such. They're more a sort of special command that we send, but effectively we use them in the same way as selecting a memory address. We just write two bytes to the memory select port, and then we write the new data for that palette entry to the data port as well of the VDP, and that will set it for us. Now, the entries you can see here, effectively, we have to send two bytes, but the bottom byte is always zero, and the top byte is always C0, and then the bottom byte is effectively a number entry that is twice the palette entry we want to change, and that's because there's two bytes per palette entry. So per color zero, palette zero is C, and then seven zeros. When we want to set color one, it's C002, quadruple zero and so on and so on and then when we want to set palette one because that's 32 bytes in co20 quadruple zero and so on and so on we really just need to write to the correct memory location now the format of the colors pretty straightforward three bits per channel effectively the top nibble is unused and then there's one nibble per color entry and of course we only use three bits of each of those color entries now the first one is the blue then there's the green, and then there's the red. Now, in these tutorials, we use a common definition for all of our systems, and we convert that common definition for the destination system we want. Now, we use one nibble per channel, so we've got an extra bit over what the Genesis needs. But last week, we did the Neo Geo, and we had one bit too few. So it kind of balances out. Anyway, our definition uses the top nibble blank, the next nibble is green, then it's red and then it's blue. So our nibbles are gonna be in totally the wrong order. So we'll need to swap them around, but that's not too bad. So let's see today's example in action. Here it is. We've got our Chibiko character. We've got a hello world message here. And you can see we've defined the colors of the Chibiko character. And the colors are defined by this block here. As I said before, one nibble, so effectively one digit per color channel. The top nibble is unused. Then we've got the green entry, the red and the blue. The background is black, so all the entries are zero. The Hair is purple, so we've got red and blue both set to a moderate level. The clothing is cyan, so we've got green almost all the way up and blue at the top here. And then we've got the white here for the face. So FFF, that defines white. As I said before though, we're gonna have some bits here that are unused by the Sega Genesis. So if we did FFE here, well, that's actually going to look the same, but on some systems, the white would then become slightly off-white, but we don't need to worry about that at this stage. When it comes to actually using this palette definition, it's very straightforward. All we're doing is we're loading the palette definition to a, into A0. We're setting D0 to the palette entry we want to change. So zero for color zero, 15 for color 15, and so on. And then we're reading in a single word from the A0 here and storing it in D1. That's gonna be our palette definition in one nibble per channel, green, red, blue format, just here. We then call this set palette function. And it's that set palette function that does all of the work. And what it's doing is you can see just here. So we need to convert green, red, blue to blue, green, red, and we're gonna to have to get rid of some nibbles as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna check if we're using a valid palette entry. Of course, there's 16 entries per palette and there's four potential palettes. So we're just checking if we've got an out of range value here so we don't write strange things into the VDP memory. Next, what we need to do is we need to work out the color entry we're going to change. Now, as I said before, these bottom bytes are completely unused. This top byte is always C0. And then here we have the color entry times two effectively. And we're doing that just here. We're masking out any unused bits. We're then rotating the color entry, which would by default start sort of here. And we're shifting it all the way along to here and effectively doubling it at the same time. 
So you can see we're rotating by eight twice just here, and that's effectively pushing it all the way over to this column here. But then we need to double it, and so we're rotating it to the left by one again just here. And that's how we are effectively increasing the value. Now, I believe we can't actually combine these together. It's not possible to do a rotation by more than eight in one go on the 68,000. So that's why we've got lots of commands to do that. But once we get to this point here, D0 will point to the correct entry for the color we want to change. As I said before, it's effectively identical to writing data to VDP memory. So we just write the destination address, so to speak, to the VDP control port, and that will now select the color we're going to change. Now all we need to do is we need to rotate the bits into the correct position. So we only want three bits of the four bit definition. So effectively we're ignoring the least significant bit. Now if we wanted all of the bits, we would have an F, but because the least significant bit is going to be skipped, we're going to be masking with an E here, which is going to take the top three bits and lose that bottom bit. So we're first taking the red here and then we're rotating it to the right here and storing that in D0. Next, what we're doing is we're taking the green. Again, we're masking it with E, rotating it to the right by four bits, and then we're storing that in D0 again. That's in D0 there. Then we're oring that with D2, which is the value we calculated just here. We do the same for the blue. This time, we need to mask it again from just here. Then we rotate it to the left, effectively two nibbles, eight bits, and now it's in the correct position. We all that into D2 again, and D2 now contains the correct format for our Genesis palette definition. Finally, all we do is we write that to the VDP data port, and that's it, we're done. So that's how we can do a definition on the Genesis. Now, it doesn't matter what palette entry and what color you want to change, because these are all consecutive. So this code can do all of the palettes, and it will work for the backgrounds and the sprites, because they use the same colors. We're going to be having a look at Genesis sprites later on. So if you found this interesting, please like and subscribe, so that you can see that later lesson covering the sprites. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson anyway. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.